Hello everyone, this is a quick video for idle system administrators and Lua script writers who want to be able to check for identical text in different sources. For example, for compliance reasons, some customers need to verify that sections of restricted text are not included in public documents. The general use case here is any situation where you want to find passages of text in other documents, even if those documents contain a lot of other text. Using our new fingerprint string Lua function, a set of characteristic hashes can be generated for a string. We call this the string's fingerprint. These fingerprints can be compared with those of other strings. Any identical hashes in the fingerprints indicate a substring match. Let's get right into it. Uh, on the right hand side we have a piece of Niffy flow which is taking Wikipedia documents from our computer uh, and indexing them into an idle engine but before it indexes them it runs it through uh, document execute document Lua processor and we're going to use this to um, call our new fingerprint string function and we're running that against document content and we're explicitly setting some optional tuning parameters here which I'll go into in more detail at the end of the video if you're still interested um, but the important thing to note is that we're taking these uh, fingerprint uh, items, uh, collecting them into a table and adding them as fields to the document so what does that look like in the end? We have um, our documents here. I've done a quick search for antibodies and we're printing the fingerprint and content of these documents. So uh, we can see that this document has a set of fingerprints um, and they map to chunks of text within the DRE content here. Um, and we can see other documents that have been returned by this query also have their own fingerprint elements. Um, and those fingerprint elements themselves are just uh, hash digests. So that's that's basically what we're doing here. Um, on the left hand side we have a demo mockup of a simple plagiarism detection engine um, where we're going to take homework submissions um, and run them through uh, an ex another execute document Lua script which will use that same fingerprint string function. So let's have a look at that. Uh, so we're going to get the document content out again, we're going to fingerprint it and in this case we're going to explicitly set the same uh, tuning parameters as we were at index time uh, so that we generate the same uh, fingerprints where necessary. Uh, we're going to take these fingerprints and we're going to query for them against the content engine using a, a match uh, field text specifier um, and using those fingerprint values in the as the value of the match uh, expression uh, and for this demo application we're going to say that if any documents come back uh, with matching fingerprints we'll say that this is a plagiarized piece of homework and if zero hits come back i.e. no matching fingerprints we'll say that this is not a piece of plagiarized homework and then we'll set this value against a plagiarized attribute on the flow file document and return it and then knowing if we can do whatever we wish to do with the value of that um, flow file attribute. Uh, if we look at this root on attribute thing, which we're just doing for this demo here, we'll take that plagiarized attribute and if it equals true, we'll root to the matched output. Um, so let's uh, simulate some homework submissions here. See that in action. Uh, it's also easier to see the documents in the queues themselves rather than in the in the uh, processor, so we'll wait for those to pop through the system, um, which shouldn't take too long. Once uh, these decide to fire off, it should be fairly instantaneous. So, firstly, let's look at the unmatched thing here, which maps to the good piece of homework. If we look at the flow file attributes, we'll see that it's got plagiarized is equal to false. If we look at the document content itself, it is from the point of view of the Wikipedia index that we have completely original text because we haven't indexed Lorem Ipsum in any of our uh, Wikipedia documents that we've sent. So that is good, that's working as expected. On the matched, i.e. plagiarized side, if we look at the queue, once again, if we look at the attributes, uh, we'll see it's got a true plagiarized attribute value. If we look at the homework itself, we'll see it's got some original text um, 
and some text that is lifted directly from the content of uh, the Wikipedia article on antibodies. So you can see here in mammals there are five types of antibody. Uh, this is a piece of matching text here, uh, matches this paragraph. We also have a p another piece of matching paragraph here, uh, along with some more original text. And what I wish to show here is that it doesn't really matter that we have some original text here and that this lifted piece of context com uh, text sorry, comes at a different offset, for example, than in the content here. We are, in our algorithm, detecting chunks of text that we then go on to hash um, in a deterministic way using some boundary detection, which isn't which doesn't uh, worry about the offset into the text, so we'll always get the same kind of text chunks out if they exist, and that will mean that we won't be fooled by uh, quite trivial uh, things here, um, where we kind of intersperse our own original text in. So yeah, that's uh, string fingerprinting. Um, we'll go into slightly more detail into those tuning parameters. Uh, and we'll do that by looking at the documentation for this function. So if we look at the fingerprint string here, we'll see that the string data is the only thing we have to give uh, as an argument to this function. We have some optional tuning parameters here, which you can leave alone. They are sensible defaults, uh, but if you wish to mess around with the tuning, um, we can set these. So min cars is the absolute minimum chunk size of any given chunk within the document uh, as a count of UTF-8 characters. Um, uh, normally 10 is the well 10 is the default value and but normally your uh, chunks will be on average a lot longer than 10 UTF-8 characters long. Um, so yeah that's the main cars thing. The mask size here is um, basically it determines the roughly the number of fingerprints you get. Um, the valid range is 1 to 31, uh, default is 8. Uh, and in broad terms, if you increase uh, that value by 1, you will have the number of um, fingerprints you get. And if you decrease that value by 1, you'll double the number of fingerprints you get. Uh, that's not a guarantee, but it will roughly match those uh, ideas. Um, so you can basically control the number of fingerprints you get back for a, a given uh, amount of text there. And then the num bytes parameter is uh, the length of a substring to check when you're calculating these chunk, string chunk boundaries. Um, you'll consider a certain amount of text and then apply this mask to them. Um, the default value of 48 is very sensible. I very rarely see the need to change that. And then we're going to return fingerprints for the input data where in most cases I think it is sensible to just collect them into a Lua table and process that table as you would. So there, yeah, that's string fingerprinting. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.